old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Welcome back to another installment of Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is my longtime good friend and one of the most knowledgeable men in the business. Of course, I'm talking about Milos Sarshev. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Dave. It's been a long time. I know. Actually, some, some, somebody asked me, are you banned from Alex Marcellus? And not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to cycle our people around. You know what it is? I get into these, you know, I had surgery on my foot. And so I've been like coasting basically, like with doing the bare, you know, my bare minimum is way more than most people's bare minimum. But I've been doing the bare minimum just to get through because I'm in pain and I've been in physical therapy and it's a, it's a pain in the ass. You know how that goes. So I can measure it. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, speaking of that, as uh, they say, are you banned from uh, Alex Marcel? Not that I know of. You mentioned something the other day yes. that I'm banned from some other place. Yes, I heard so, you. I heard Iris Kyle kicked you out of um, the powerhouse gym there. Yeah, how did you hear that? Well, I heard that you said it on an, on I think the DJ's podcast or something like that. Yeah, yes, exactly. But then you said that you spoke to Iris. Well, yeah, you know what is I like to verify the sources because I I know you said it on the show, so I'm assuming it was correct because I, I I don't know you to be a liar or anything like that. You're usually pretty accurate. So I said, Iris, what happened? Because you know I'm friends with her. And, um, you know, she implied that, you know, I guess you had gone over there as a master trainer and then uh, you were take hogging up the machines too much. And she had warned you and, 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 and that it was, you know, interrupting other people from working out. And so she they had to ask you to, you know, to leave. Is that accurate? Okay. And, and then you mentioned the very important thing that oh, Iris never lies. Right. I said you I said you never lie. I didn't say anything about Iris. I don't know. No, no, that's that's what you said on the, on that uh Well, she uh, never has lied to me. I don't you know, I don't know what her reputation. I'm just saying yeah. I know you are a very very uh, honest person because yeah. you're like you have a photographic memory and you give the account and details of accounts that I've never seen anyone yeah, do in my life before. You know, but but this is uh, you see it's still message it's uh Adex Muscle is huge fl platform. Instantly, like 10 minutes later I got a call from uh <laughs> Uh, Australia from desktop bodybuilding, right? <laughs> then from Nick Sargili from Evolution <laughs> Bodybuilding. I mean, instantly after you said that, like, because they got on. now they got they need content. These guys for their their channel, they got fodder. Okay, for... but but listen, yeah. uh, because what is the message? Oh, uh, Miosh is kicked out of the gym because uh, he's disrespecting the members, right? Yeah. So this is for all the other gym uh, owners around the world. They might say maybe Miosh shouldn't be welcome here because. He's, uh, you know, you know, disrespecting members using all these machines, yeah. and we shouldn't invite him. Uh, and I told you, Iris is a liar to the point that uh, she can make up the truth if she wants it. And I told you right away from. Uh, well, what uh, happened? You, Tell me. You know, we don't have to okay. go into Iris's personal life. What what happened with? Uh, yeah. Why did you leave? The, why did you get kicked out of the gym? So you tell me uh, like this: Is this actually possible that uh, somebody's going to kick me out? because I was doing a giant set. I do giant sets for 20 something years. I did right. every workout with Hidetari Yamagishi from 2006, first time he walked into the gym with Chris Dim, I put him right away in a, in a right. uh, giant set everywhere, in Australia, in China, in Japan, in Europe, here in America, right. constantly. Not a single workout I did with Hide that we didn't do it in a giant sets. Okay. Uh, actually, one time that, uh, uh, What's the name? Iris was with us in Australia in uh, Dorothy's gym. Okay. You know, Tony Dorothy's gym. Okay. She want to join us? Okay. And you have to join and did, do the giant sets. So they are very well aware of that I'm doing giant sets. Look, I've been in oh, Dubai. Just, just for people Perth, who don't know, giant sets are when you, you set up like four machines and you go from machine to machine to machine to machine, 
continuously, yeah. but different. It's like you're hitting different parts of the body part almost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be different body parts right. together. It could right. be the same muscle. I just want to. But the know. bottom line is this: I would be in a gym like this in uh, Dubai when uh, I have a uh, twenty people in a in a training camp. Mm -hmm. Twenty people training all at once. Right. My giant sets and and members are still training and they have no problem. So being invited by Hide, okay, come to my gym. Right. Listen, in a, here, so you, you can understand the business wise. There's a Dragon's Lair open before Powerhouse, right. Fit Club, Advanced Training Institute, Iron Factory, Yachts, many other gyms. I was invited and welcome to train. Right. Because Hide and I have a long history. Sure. So, okay, I want to support his business. Okay, Milos, please bring your business there. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing my business there. Right. I bring uh, Regan as soon as I start working with him. Sure. Well, guess what? Regan, you have to pay. Hmm. I can train him for free in any other gym. Right. Here he, he has to pay. I mean, so I pro, hold on. Pro, so pros here don't here train for week. free at, at Iris and Hide's gym? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in uh, uh, Hide's gym, Hide would just say, ask Iris. And of course, Iris just charge everyone. Okay. Okay. That's. All right. So, which which is uh, the decision of oh, my business is my business. Right. Okay, here, but but you gotta understand if you come visit me and I want to take you to the gym. Right. And I said, Dave, okay, I can take you to any gym, and I choose to bring you to the powerhouse gym, and right. they're gonna charge you like, oh shit. So I bring Logan. First time he came with me. Right. We go there. I decide I'm gonna take him there because I want, you know, to be taking picture, put on the social media, you know, advertise all this. This is how you you grow the business, right? As soon as we walk in, you know, typically I says, hey, hi, this, this is Logan. Who? I said, Logan, who, who, who are you? Like this. And then shit, I mean, to the point that I was so fucking uncomfortable, right? But she, she look at the front desk and said, yeah, charge him, right? So it is a, a first experience and many experiences like that. Okay, so right? you, were, you were embarrassed by that is what you're saying. It's embarrassing. It's okay. look, it's not necessary. I mean... As I discussed with Hida, I said, like, well, listen. I mean, it's her gym. It's their gym. They can do whatever they want. But like you said, I mean, you, you, I always felt that pros at a gym were were something that got people to want to go to the gym. But, you know. That's... Absolutely. Absolutely positively. This is how it is. Yeah. But uh, to, you know, make it a little bit shorter because I know that you want to. Yeah, I want to talk about carbs here. Uh, there was never, look, there was always issue of her greed, bossy, controlling, strong personality, whatever people would say. no. She was just make everybody uncomfortable. And which was confirmed by Jay Cutler, manager Matt, Dave, Mad Max. We were at the uh, uh, Dennis Swab's party. And then list of old training partners of Hide from Rocky to uh, Cody to Joe. I mean, you don't know maybe those names. Like uh, the, the general uh, notion is she makes everybody uncomfortable. So after this incident with uh, uh, Logan, uh, my wife, who is very close friend with uh, Hida, she sent him a message in, uh, in he was in Japan. Right. Hey, listen, this is how it is. I mean, giant, uh, uh, Jamie, the giant, say, same story, right? Mm. Uh, she said, Hida, I mean, uh, everybody feels uncomfortable with her being so bossy, so controlling. You know, so uh, he goes, okay, I guess talks to her. She sends a nasty message to my wife. Right. So I call her and confronted her. Right. So Milo said, I don't appreciate your tone. I said, I don't care what you appreciate. You don't appreciate. You need to be told what you need to hear. You know, this is embarrassing. Right. You are charging $30 a day, somebody that's going to post on the social media and sure. he can post, he can charge $2,000 for one post. Right. I mean, where is, where's your business sense? Right. And for me, I can take those guys to any of those gyms right. for free. I understand what you're saying. Okay. So think about it. Right. So then uh, he they came back from Japan and I invited him for Thanksgiving uh, dinner. And I told him in front of Jamie the Giant and many other people, this is how it is. She makes everybody super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Who, who, who? Jay Cutler, Flex Lewis, right. da, 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 all this, you know. Okay, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I told him that. So they're supposed to talk to me, but first day, second day, they, they never really had a chance to talk. Right. So ironically... I'm training in the powerhouse and Dave Mad Max, you know, you yeah. know, Mad Max. Yeah, I know, Dave. He, he runs to me and my wife and funny, he says, uh, Jay made me call to see if Iris is here and she's not. So he's coming. He says, okay, then I'll wait for Jay. So I wait for him to come. 
Yeah. And then I, I did a little video shoot. All this stuff. Look, what message do you want when somebody calls your gym to find out if you're there? And when you're not there, you know, they're coming. So this is exactly what happened. I mean, what is the it, message? It almost, look, you know what, Milos? It almost seems like Iris doesn't really want the pros there. She wants to have a business where it's just a gym and she can just she can run it like a business and she doesn't want all the – maybe she feels these pros in there are intimidating to the regular members. <laughs> I, I don't Come know. On. That's the only thing I can, I can think about. Maybe uh, it, maybe this – subconsciously, she really doesn't want all you guys there. No, maybe but, it doesn't but you matter. Didn't, you didn't answer my question. Yeah. You know, th my question was about – when somebody calls, they say, they pull, pull, yeah. they pull in the No, in the I office. understand what you're saying. You are, There's obviously an uncomfortable situation, but she's the business, business owner who runs the business. So she should so, just tell, you know what? She should just say to everyone, I don't want bodybuilders in here. I want this to be no, a regular but gym. But that's not the case because, okay, yeah. now I'm going to answer your question. Yeah. Because when Regan came, yeah. uh, Danny, uh, I mean, uh, he didn't insist that I train him exclusively there. Okay. Flex Swiss would come to me and say, you know, why wouldn't you train here, right? Yeah. And no, 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 because he wanted that if you go there, the, oh. the you know, traffic will follow. Okay. So I always supported, you know, he does business because he's close sure. friend for 20-something yep. years. Yeah. You know, this, I could, you know, make something happen for him. You tell me, why would I choose if I can take Logan for free there, but I take him there and he has to pay? It it seems like this just was a disagreement. I wish you guys could all sit down and just iron it out because, you know, I, like, no, I love all there's you guys. Nothing you know? So, so let me just finish because yeah. uh, I, I need to complete once we start yes. uh, opening the can of worms. Sure. So the Japanese guy that works for Hide mm -hmm. came to my wife and asked her in Japanese, uh, well, I was training with the, with the Jay, uh, why did the Jay call to find out if Iris is here? So she told him, maybe he doesn't feel comfortable. It's not a maybe, it's guaranteed he it doesn't feel comfortable, so now she's not here. So he came. Right. Same thing that I already told, explained to Hide. Right, so that's already explained. Well, that got back to Iris, and Iris told Hide to kick out my wife because uh, she's talking okay. shit. Uh, okay, so see. listen, I guess that's much deeper, and I just want to say this one more time, and I'm never going to talk about this again. But so Hide calls my wife that I met her first time Hide came. They were best of friends for 25 years already. Okay. I mean, long history, like a sister to him. Right, and he goes, "Oh no, but." Uh, you said so bad. I said she just said that he's uncomfortable. Oh, you have to come and apologize. So I heard this and I pick up the phone and say, Hide, apologize for what? It's nothing to apologize. I would never apologize. But my wife is a bigger person than me. So she goes, Okay, let's go. The next day I'm gonna apologize. Right. So okay, I'm gonna be with her there. You know, just uh, let me hear this. Right. And she apologizes, and then that's when Iris goes, I don't accept your apology. Oh, oh. Okay, so here's now a punchline. Up until that moment, I had a zero problem in the gym. There was not one single person member that waited for the piece of machine right. that I was doing a giant sets and uh, occupying. I was never warned about anything. Zero, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was training uh, um, Regan for the Summer Classic. Regan was after COVID dead. He right. could not have any kind of intensity. We never did the giant sets. Sure. Which you can see on the, on the videos. So Aris just made all that up that people are complaining. And because she's controlling Hida so much, basically, right? She told him that uh, I'm not welcome there. Oh. Okay. So uh, I was supposedly kicked out right. for uh, uh, taking up uh, all the machines. Hey, you knew that I'm doing a giant sets training. Mm -hmm. And you call me here to be a master trainer, knowing that this is how I train you in Australia. Right. And I trained Hida like this for 10 years. Okay. So, but the real truth is, okay, uh, Dave, I kicked her out. You probably heard that 10, 15 years ago out of my gym because oh. she was accomplice with Patrick Lynn that was stealing from me uh, oh. that I was told and I catch them and then I confronted them and kicked them out. So I never talked to Iris for you know, over a decade. I and then when that. I came back to the States in 2017, yeah. he days with her, I, got, I just squashed it. So right, we never really right, talked right. about it. Uh, but for you, you know, to say, uh, like publicly, you were kind of laughing, the Mueller, she's a troublemaker, takes all these machines. I have never in the history of my giant sets have issues except one time, 
at Fit Nation Gym because of Hida. Right. And Hida was invited there to prepare for Arnold right. Classic. Right. And the owners invited me to train him there, which yeah. we did. And then one guy one time complained, and then they squashed it right away. Right. But, so yeah. in my history of training, uh, giant sets were never a problem. All right. I, and all, I, 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 I apologize. It was more of a joke because you, I, I was thinking back. And you remember the old Steve Mahalik years where he would he would yeah. rope off like 10 machines. And if you came across the rope, he would like throw you out of the gym. So I, I, I had that whole vision of you like roping off all these machines. And it was really more of, you know, tongue in cheek. I really I didn't think that you would be disrespectful. I know you very well for many years. So if I insulted you, I, I, that wasn't my intention. So. Well, you know, yeah. when you say like uh, Iris never lies, then somebody is lying, either me or her. Well, That's I don't think I... she she might not be lying, but I think she obviously was. There, there was there's some kind of a personality clash here, and that and that's the real problem, from what you're telling me. Obviously, I sent you that document to see her age. All right, <laughs> I, I? I don't. Like, I don't want to go into the into the passport. Into the passport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, but hey, just because when you claim somebody doesn't lie, then somebody lies to the whole world. Yeah. Forever in hooker, you know, that's puts in perspective. So next time you say something, she never lies. Think about it. Yeah, I, you know, Iris doesn't trust a lot of people, and you know, I, I I've been friends with her for many years, and you know, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, lose a friendship. But I, I understand there's two sides to the story, and you know what? From from my experience with you, I, I don't see you as a troublemaker. So I, it didn't make sense to me the whole story, but. I didn't know what you were doing in the gym. I thought maybe you were monopolizing a lot of the machines. That's the only thing I could think of. But if you're telling me you weren't, I take your word at face value because it's uh, it's guaranteed like this. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, my question to you is: If he, did, knowing that I'm doing a, a giant sets training, yeah, is inviting me to be a master trainer in his gym. Yeah. He expects me to do the giant right. sets. If people would complain, no, you're right. They know what you do. It's them, not. It's, it's no trains. right. It's no secret that that's how you train people. So yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, if that was the case. But anyway, uh, would you feel uh, comfortable if in any podcast you're hearing, oh, Dave Palumbo was kicked out because of trouble that he was making somewhere? Yeah, I would. I would you do know? a rant on it. You know that. I would tell the whole story. Yeah, I know. Yeah, why, so I well, that's why I called you up. That's why I said let's get you uh, on. I wanted to hear your side of the story. You know. Yeah. yeah. My my wife didn't want me to like bring myself down to that level and all this stuff. But I I, I always stand behind. Well, this is your reputation. It's your reputation. So I like to yeah. confront people. You have to rep. You have to um. You have to defend your reputation. I I understand that. And like I said, yeah. I consider you a friend. And and like I said, that's why I wanted to give you your equal time here and to talk about it. So look, it's there a shame. So where now? Where are you training people now? Where did you move your operations? I train uh, mostly in a Jonas Lair. Okay, yeah, Jonas Lair is uh, is the place I'm going, and it's uh. As you see, probably on uh, social media, it's a booming yeah. gym, mm -hmm. and people, uh, you know, all Look, the pros both, are usually going there. Both gyms are great. Obviously, they have different types of environments there, and it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame that you, because I know you're very tight with Hide, and you really have a long relationship with him for many years. It's a shame that you can't, you know, work this out. It's That's a shame. It's a shame that he actually let that happen. But the, another thing that you mentioned also that uh, Iris told you is something about Regan. What did she tell you? She said that you weren't with, you weren't training him anymore. That's that was the impression I got from what she said. Now you said something more also that I'm not coaching him at all. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who told you that? I that's I, that's the impression I got from Iris's text message to me. Yeah. A, a text message, and yeah. she says, "What? Do you even mentioned that I made him watery or something. That's why he uh, chose not to to, to uh, co be coached. You were watery. Yeah, they looked watery. Yeah. Oh really? So. Uh, Regan is coming to train with me at one o'clock with uh, Logan, and I asked her, "What is this?" I say, I "Say what?" <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of thing that uh, uh, also put in perspective. Regan moves from Canada to train with me, right. and I take him to the powerhouse gym, and then she kicks me out, but tells Regan, "Oh, please, you are well welcome to say mm. that's my coach. I'm supposed to train with him." Right, right. And that was at a time that uh, I was training him every day. So, of course, we never came back. Right. Since then, uh, he's not training with me. Uh, we squeeze in a workout here and there, but, uh, you know, he's training everywhere. Right. And Powerhouse has some good equipment that he likes to do sure. legs and back and stuff like that. So I heard they have great equipment but, but, over there. But, yeah. but again, this kind of thing that uh, Aris takes a liberty to tell you, and then you, like you said, you like to confirm things before you uh, put it on air. Right. So you put it on air right. that I'm not coaching him. Right. Well, I, I, I didn't I didn't think she had any reason not to, uh, to to lie about that, you know. So 
I don't know. It was my. I said my bad. I apologize. Uh, you know, this just uh, for you to question yourself. You say you said information is not verified. You could have called me. You could call uh, Regan. Yeah, I should have. You're so right. right now, it was, oh my God, you're not training Regan. I said, well, let me find. Well, find as long out as you're training him. Regan, then there's no harm done. I, I, I you know, th th obviously. There was there was there, there a possibility that there was something going on behind your back that you weren't not aware of? Maybe. I mean, he trains there. I mean, of course, listen, he can possibly feel comfortable there mm -hmm. when uh, he knows that I have a conf conflict with her. Right. I mean, uh, uh, put yourself in that position. So of course, uh, when they talk, uh, what he's going to say? Of course. Uh, well, he might have to told her that he wasn't going to train with you anymore. I mean, I don't. Th I don't see why Iris would say that if that wasn't true in her mind. So maybe Reagan, mm -hmm. you know, said, "Oh yeah, I'll stay here." You know, I, I like. But it here. Uh, whatever she said, uh, it was a phone call away for for you. You're right. To find I, out from, you're right. I from Reagan and from me. You're right. I should have called you. You're right. One hundred percent. All right. Maybe you learned a lesson. I learned. I did learn a lesson. I'm sorry. Let's yeah. let's uh, let's talk carbs because you know what we're in the midst of the contest season, Milos, and I've witnessed various bodybuilders at the pro level, at the top amateur level, and I see guys coming in off. And when I say off, I'm not talking about like conditioning off. I'm talking about either they're too carbed up, or they're too little carbed up, or their whole the water is not in the right place, and I feel like people nowadays are, are lacking knowledge about. I mean, there is a there is a way to do it. I mean, you have your own techniques, I have mine. But but by and far, we're pretty close in terms of like you know peaking people properly. Why are people coming in so off recently? Uh, you know, uh, first of all, I don't see the same kind of conditioning going in ten weeks out, eight weeks out, six weeks yeah. out, four weeks out. You know, it's not the same. Right. You remember pictures of Dorian Yates six weeks out? Right. I mean. Uh, you know, are guys me, waiting too I, long? I, I and they wait to the last minute. I mean, uh, yeah, I discussed this also uh, when King Kamali confronted me. Like, hey, man, is this healthy to be lean all season long? Why you know you're supposed to let go and be big in off season? So uh, first, uh, you tell me yourself: Do you want to look like a bodybuilder year round, or you want to be uh, one month before the show in shape and feeling <laughs> shit because you have to die down? And uh, right. be in caloric deficit, do all the cardio and stuff like that, right. and then 11 months be a blowfish. Right. First, uh, uh, aesthetically, do you like that? And secondly, uh, health wise. So I was keeping myself in the shape that many times I entered the show on a four week notice. I didn't plan to. Okay, 99. Vane uh, asked me, you want to do it? I said, okay, I'll, I'll do Night of Champions. I did uh, Canada, not planned. Right. You know, so, you know, first, I think that nowadays, you know, people don't get in the uh, uh, right shape early enough. Gotcha. And then now this, so you know how it goes. During a prep, you need to maintain as much muscle and lose all the body fat, okay? Right. That's like weeks. And then towards the end, week out, you have to make sure that, that you are already fat free. Now you're just manipulating carbs and water in the muscle and uh, subcontaneous, okay? So here it is, a little bit more carbs, full, beautiful, but watery. Oh, or not enough carbs, flattish, but dry. Right. Oh, not good. So you would have to, you know, have the best of, the, of both worlds, right? Uh, I would usually like to test it. So Me too. Uh, four weeks out, three weeks out, right. to see how much carbs I can give them. And listen, there are extremes. We talk about Dennis Fault needing 5,000 grams right. of carbs. Right, let's talk about the person that's that's not that extreme, because that's not the typical person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and listen, and I'm sure that you did, uh, I heard, some of your guys were, you know, with me. Yeah. And uh, they said, like, you carved them up with uh, three, four, five hundred grams of carbs. Yeah. And they look exploding full. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, many people listening even this conversation now is how much carbs? It, you cannot determine. You cannot give a number now. Yeah. Yeah. If inspect what you expect, you look what is happening. But uh, for me, it was always like this once the carb is in, so glucose binded with water into the glycogen is there. Right. Yeah, you don't want to burn it. You don't want to use it. Once you start that carb loading method, you put it into the muscle. You know, diuretic is not really going to break down the glycogen and yeah. release the, the water, right? So you first have to put the glycogen in. Yep. If it's there, okay, then you can play with the dropping the water. Many you know, yeah, people, oh, that's a good point. Hold on, you made a very good point. Why I noticed some gurus out there, some coaches 
are giving diuretics while they're carving people up, which I think is ridiculous because it does inhibit the body's ability to store glycogen. We, and we yes. know that insulin doesn't work in, in, in a dehydrated state. It, ask any type 1 diabetic what happens when they, get di when they get dehydrated. They can't maintain their blood sugar. So you know how it is? Many coaches, many athletes, which is okay. Let's throw everything into the sink. We need everything. We need everything. Right. Every drug in the world there is there. They, they use it. Trump and Israel, T3, T4, you know, DNP, God knows, yeah. you know, all these kind of things. And then, you know, to get in shape for super low carbs or no carbs. And now it's time to load. So some go with all this shit loading. And, uh, and listen, I know that you sometimes gave a burgers and all that stuff. Yeah. And may, maybe for the people that used to this in their diet and they don't have a, any major inflammation, right. they can handle it so you can count on it. But many people that never do that and then start like, you know, everything is allowed. Of course, they're, right. they're inflamed. and uh, Right. It's like the guy loaded. who hasn't eaten uh, like any dairy in, in, in 25 weeks and then they start eating. They're going to have ice cream or cheesecake the day before the show. That's probably not a smart idea if you haven't been doing it all along, you know. Absolutely. But if you ask me now for this, uh, how are you going to put that glycogen in? You cannot take a water out. You need that water yes. for glucose to be binded. You cannot take the sodium because sodium is important for glucose transfer yep. too. Yep. They cut the sodium. They uh, Even they don't cut the water, but they take diuretics. Yeah. Okay. It's all those mistakes. No, you don't do this until you fill yourself up. 100%. And now when you fill yourself with the glycogen, you're bursting and say, okay, then is that last step of how you're going to dehydrate. Yep. And you know very well, overnight sleep many times can solve that. Yeah. And that's, you, you can maybe add a little bit of, uh, I like what you do, diazide, yeah. you know, not uh, aggressive diuretic. Right. But many people, I want this so bad. I, I just want to dry, 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 dry. And it comes to the point, right? Your body's rebounding and, uh, you know, it's actually trying to protect or being dehydrated yep. by holding the water. Yep. Yep. You hit it on you hit you, you nailed it 100%. The biggest <laughs> mistake is dehydration and sodium depletion while you're trying to carb up. It just doesn't work. You yeah, completely yeah. have negated the body's ability to store glycogen and water. But listen, you are from the 90s and I'm sure that you know back in the 90s many champions actually did sodium deplete for quite some uh, some time. Right. I mean uh, I'm going to say Charles Claremont, phenomenal yeah. guy, right? Yeah. And he would cut the sodium like we cut. Uh, now, in different countries also, as you said, the diuretics. I've seen countries, they would have a, a one month before the show, one month. Wow. Every single day they were taking the diuretics. I mean, wow. you explain this. <laughs> Yeah, I was in Well, you, you know, Republic, your body adapts, example, though, after a while. They don't even work. You know what happens, Milos. Your body kind of course. overrides that. But you know what? Even Dorian Yates, and when I interviewed him, he even said to me, you know what? He goes, because remember we asked, I asked him about 92 to 93, what changed? How did you put all that muscle on? He goes, I, did, I had all that muscle in 92. I just was over overdoing it. I was overtraining. I, was, I wasn't carving enough. I was over depleting. Too much sodium I took out. Too many diuretics. He... He even said it himself because that was, like you said, that was the technique people used in that era. Yeah. And so it didn't make it right. You know, if Dorian was could have been 15 pounds heavier, had he probably known what he was doing, you know? Yeah, but here is another answer. A lot of people are conservative and they want to play safe. And I project that uh, this much carbs should be enough, right? Yeah. And that's what you do day in, day out, and this is it. Yeah. And then usually maybe – Post-competition, when you let yourself, okay, I can maybe try with a little bit more carbs. And you see, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I could get away with more carbs. Right. So Dorian is a perfect example. Yes. I suppose the 92, close to the show, he looked just like it, but then over-dieted. The 93, he looked like an absolute freak. freak yeah. yeah? Uh, so for me, it was the same thing. I was conservative, and then I said, okay, let me see how much more I can get. Right. And then, then I started putting more carbs, more carbs, more carbs. And this is what I do uh, with my uh, athletes as well. First, they, turn, first they have to get lean. Yeah. So if I get the lean athlete, then it's no brainer. That's beautiful. But when you get person that gets fat, and now you have to manipulate, right. uh, this is a problem of the curse. Is, is that's what I, I? It seemed like when you started working with with um, Regan, he was a little on the flatter side. He still had that structure, and then it, all of a sudden you started working with him, and he just 
volumized up like crazy yeah. with the same level of leanness. It looked, it looked like he gained yeah. twenty pounds of muscle, but he probably only was. You probably just filled him out more, right? Just filled out. I mean, I mentioned to you about uh, uh, Dennis Fultz, two thousand seven. Yeah, he was seventeen pounds lighter than two thousand eight, and wow. uh, two thousand eight when you put him, uh, he looked way bigger. Two thousand seven for that illusion, right? Yeah. I was many times stopped on uh, expos and said, oh, you know, don't look so big. Like on the stage, I look bigger. I always created the illusion of myself being bigger on the stage with this. I fully loaded. Yeah. Did I sometimes went overboard a little bit? Yeah. And listen, I, I am uh, guilty of o overspilling many guys. You know, right. Dennis James that right. I did. Uh, I just talked about this. Right. You know, there, there is a times and look. When a guy is so close to the Olympia, and then you say, okay, this little risk can now put him in upper echelon and top five, right. okay? Or well, if you just play safe here, yeah, he's going to be top 10. Right. So they say, okay, what are his qualities? Oh, this guy is going to look way better if he's fully blown. Right. This guy is better off if he kind of deplete him and get him straight. And, you know, there are different athletes right. that you decide okay i'm gonna go this way i'm gonna go that. yep and and listen we are not uh having a formula that we can now say this is gonna work even for each guy so you watch you watch you watch and then there's there okay then he wakes up in the morning not exactly the way you want it yep and then usually if you try the last minute changes it can go right way or wrong way yeah no you're, you're right i mean like no one's infallible i look every even the best of coaches out there they have the best track record have made mistakes and maybe that not maybe not made mistakes just you know miscalculated and you got to remember there's other variables how much a person sleeps their anxiety level how much stress they're going on in their life at the time are they fighting with their wife or girlfriend at the time the, yeah. the, the, there's so many variables that go into how you look on stage you know all you can try to do is duplicate that formula over and over and obviously the longer you work with someone I, I tell people this all the time if i work with you a long time and i have the ability to do trial and error with you and carb you up and see how your body responds to clean carbs versus burger and fry carbs versus you know yeah. other stuff then you're going to have a much better grip on being able to peak that person for a show because you know how their body responds to different foods okay i want to ask you this one because uh, that did, intrigues me here and there i gave some people burger and I, I give them because yeah. I passed with them and then I looked at them a day later so okay that did, did you good so I let those guys do the burger you right. know for the uh, but in general clean carbs as you mentioned yeah. are gonna give body clean glucose with no triglycerides and any inflammatory things mm. and glucose is needed for glycogen so Clean carbs is always for me way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I know that many times, many coaches just yeah burgers and fries. I mean, you can watch on uh, YouTube nowadays Nathan Diasha yeah. or Roddy Winkler or this and that. Uh, they're just pounding on, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I know that you probably did with, with uh, some people. You give yeah. them uh, burger and fries. Yeah. How can you justify? Like, what is I'll nutrition from a fry going to do? I'll tell you why it works because. And I and I and I, I learned this using my own physique as the guinea pig. Okay, what I realized was that my metabolism was so fast that when I would start carving up, and I did the I in the 90s I was doing the clean carbs and with all the usual typical protocol everyone else used. But what I noticed was that the more carbs I ate, it's like I couldn't store them. It didn't even matter if I used insulin or not. It was like it was revving my metabolism up so fast that my body was using the carbs that I was eating to carb up with to actually use them for energy. So I was never storing the carbs. They never got stored as glycogen. What I found was that if I put in a, like a, a, a junkie, I'm not talking about eating burgers and fries all day, one meal. If I gave my body once a day, those last couple of days, a, a junkier meal, it almost acted like it, it, it slowed my metabolism. It gave my body something to burn so that the clean carbs can actually get stored as glycogen. And now my body had some like uh, something to like distract it in a sense. And I think a lot of these guys that are walking around with 260 plus pounds of muscle are noticing the same thing, that if they don't eat a little bit of junk, you know, because they're already leaned out, they're not going to fully carb up because they can't 
physically eat enough food, clean food to carve themselves up, even with insulin, even with all the other tricks you could possibly do. And if they and if they actually have the audacity or the ability to consume enough carbs, it bloats them out too much because it's too much volume they have to put into their body. So they use denser foods. I know Hunter Labrada told me this when I interviewed him. He's like, Dave, you know, I got to eat like junkier foods because, with the higher caloric density because my metabolism is too fast. I can't, I can't fill out otherwise. Yeah, but uh, okay, th this is uh, also the question. Yeah. What do you think is going to be used for energy uh, if it's in the same time in the body? You know, triglycerides or glucose? What would be instantly well, used? Well, I'll, I'll answer that question. The last three days, you're not doing anything. So everything that your body burns is going to be mostly body fat because, or, or dietary fat because that's a slow, you know, that you're not doing any fast twitch movements. If you were in the gym training, I, I completely would agree with you. Yeah. You would need carbs as fuel. But if you're just sitting around all day, just carving up and watching TV, maybe going through your poses, you're not going to be using a lot of glycogen. So the fats will get used for fuel. The glycogen will get stored as, as, as uh, glycogen. Okay, no, they, they, and I don't know the answer. That's yeah. why I'm asking you. Yeah. So right now, we are not training all day Friday before the right. show. We are not training, okay? And we eat something that's going to give us glucose right. and triglyceride. It's in the bloodstream. Now, why would body choose to use uh, uh, fat as the energy? Well, because if it's glycogen storage is empty, right? Uh, needs to be stored first. So glucose... It's easier to be, you know, taken by the body and used as a fuel than triglyceride. Well, no, not necessarily. When your body's doing slow, sustained movements, which is like just walking around, you know, brushing your teeth, yeah. and it's gonna, the body prefers to use, you know, fat, yes. fat as a fuel yeah. source, right? You know, so the glucose, and, and once again, I, this, I give the burger and fries as the last meal of the day. Usually, they're ostensibly you're carved up at that point. You know what I mean? What I notice is when guys look insane like on a friday night before a saturday morning show and, and i'm like looking at them like oh my god this guy look could step on stage right now at this moment i know that by the next morning they're going to be flat as a pancake and i it's almost like you need to give their body like a buffer something that's going to last them overnight that their bodies can use that's a very high you know caloric type of meal that's going to give their body something to burn over the over the course of the six or eight hours or whatever they're going to sleep at night and you so can you're wait. counting on that yeah. uh, that uh, junk meal to cover the, the sleep. Yes, I, yeah, yeah that, that's I find it works really well. So when they wake up in the morning, they're not like flat as a pancake. Plus, all that sodium in that in that meal also kind of gives them a little buffer. So if there's a diuretic on board, it it won't overflush too much sodium and water out of the body as well. Yeah, all right. And it I doesn't. Mean, and you're you right. It doesn't work with everyone. You they're, were. You can give it to some people so and they times. get they get terrible. You you got to make sure you the person you're using with using it on has a very fast metabolism. Otherwise it, it, it can make them worse, you know. Yeah. You see, you know, for me uh like in <laughs> many cases yeah. I would give them more like a pasta meals, meals at night with the you know sauces and all that stuff yeah. and ground beef or ground Yeah, everyone whatever, has their know. own their own techniques. I mean, that's the same same concept, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but uh, it's interesting. So you, at your best shape, uh, when you play second to Tony Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how much did you carb up there, you remember? Yeah, I probably ate about 450 grams of carbs, and I had one uh, McDonald's meal per day, like that last couple days. In addition That's to the, in addition to those carbs, I I don't know how many grams of carbs were in the McDonald's meal, but that was like one of those meals during the day was a McDonald's meal, and then everything else was like clean. It was like chicken or fish or maybe a little lean red meat or some eggs with you know rice or potatoes. Those were my favorites, you know, to carb up. For the yeah, what is the most amount of carbs you give to anyone? I have people that I've given eight, nine hundred grams of carbs a day. I, I, I you know, some people just for one day or two per day. I've given some people eight hundred grams of carbs for the day. You know, three days in a row, and 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 it was almost like not enough. Some guys have crazy metabolisms. I, yeah. I you know, but not not a lot. Most people, I, I usually give anywhere in the range of three to four fifty. That usually does it. I find with most people. Most people for one day, two day, three days. 
Yeah, for like, yeah, if they have a Saturday morning show, like starting half, maybe half a day on, on Wednesday and then all day Thursday and Friday. Yeah. 350 to 400, let's say. Right. <laughs> but, but I don't cut fat, Milo. So I'm still giving yeah. them protein and I'm giving them probably 20 to 25 grams of fat per meal, but clean, but clean fats like olive oil, macadamia nut oil, avocados, and, and maybe some nuts or some all natural peanut butter. Um, th- because I believe that that fat acts as a buffer too. And it doesn't, it makes sure that the carbs yeah. get stored as, as glycogen and the fats can be used for fuel. I'm glad that the other thing that you mentioned is like uh, the biggest danger is dehydration, right? Yep. And I know that uh, many uh, coaches uh, are going with the super low uh, water the last couple of days. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know why they do that. I think it's it's silly, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, we know who I'm talking about. And yep. he did have a good results. Like, okay. So, uh, you know, when, when uh, athletes come to me and they, they start arguing, I said, you can't argue with the results. Yeah, it just yep. for me didn't make sense. So you keep the water all the way until Friday night? I don't touch water or sodium until the night bef- until the day before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you know, know that, that's sometimes much- people succeed despite the science because people are genetic freaks. You know that. I know. I look. I've seen guys that that could eat like one meal a day, and they look insane. It's like holy mackerel! You ate one meal. You look unbelievable. And then you give another guy one meal, and they'll they'll look like they're ready for you know to go to the hospital. So there are people that have genetic superiority that can, you can do anything with, you cannot mess them up. And you know who these guys are and everyone yeah. takes credit. Oh, I got this guy in great shape. Well, this guy can eat dog food and he can look great on stage because he's got insane genetics, you know? Did you ever sodium load? Um, I never sodium deplete. I always give people a lot of sodium. So I'm always sodium loading. I just remove a little sodium at the end if, yeah. if necessary, you yeah. know? Yeah, but not like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we give them more salt. If they're not salty, because you know how some people don't like salt? Like, I, I was always like pouring soy sauce and, and salt yeah. in my foods because I'm a big salt fanatic. But if people are not big salt people, yeah, I'll make them salt their foods like the early in the week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because that's another um, principle back in late 80s, early 90s, yeah. sodium loading and then uh, uh, potassium loading at the end. Yeah, I don't potassium. I always feel I'm always worried about potassium because you know what? You can really mess people up with too much potassium, and you know, big time, people, yeah. And then big people time. start kicking uh, the I mean, aldactone in, and then they put the the potassium on top of that, and then they, you know what happens when that you know. Get, yeah, we talk about this at yeah. one time. Uh, there was a lot of people in the nineties uh, taking slow K. Yeah, you know, with aldactone or aldactazide, and uh, that was super dangerous. And uh, I think well, I mentioned to you, you saved the, Mustafa address, Muhammad, Munzer, life. who was uh, yeah. super ripped. I mean, he would be uh, aldactone and potassium together, which is, uh, you know, uh, hard stopping waiting to happen. Look, we know we don't have to mention names. We know some gurus who've who've killed people in the last couple of years with with aldactone, high potassium intake via potatoes and 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 stuff like that, bananas, and it happens. It's it's a lot easier to kill someone than you think. You know, people don't realize that electrolytes are no joke. You do not want to mess with electrolytes. That's why I don't really change anything. The last week, if you look great, why why am I going to play around with your sodium and your water? You know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to I'm just going to change at the very end. Just pull some water, pull a little sodium if necessary while they're on a diuretic, and and you know, there's there's no chance of anything going wrong. You know, how do you do water on the day of the show? You know what? I've always I was always a, a non like maybe like a couple ounces in the morning and then just a sipper. But you know what? I found I've been giving people a little bit more water recently, and I find that it, it keeps them a little fuller. You know, but you gotta you gotta know who you're dealing with. Some people are water bags. You give them a couple of ounces, and all of a sudden, yeah. I don't know how they how they can be. All of a sudden, they have no abs. You know, and then other people you can give two ounces, two ounces, two ounces with every meal, and they look amazing. So you got to know how the person's body kind of processes fluids and. Do they hold water? Yeah. Don't they hold water? You know the story with the uh, 98 uh, Ronnie Coleman Olympia prep? No. Did you know uh, when uh, it says Friday night? I mean, he says he was so spilled over. He was, uh, you know, and up until 97, right? He was ninth at the Olympia. Yeah, he was so never he really credited. Yeah. He's like, uh, oh, here we go again. I, I'm just going to be also competing like always. So I guess, uh, and then he started cramping up like a maniac. And I said, call Chad. And Chad told him, drink gallon of water. Gallon. At that time. But listen, 
uh, he wake up in the morning. I don't know if you remember prejudging. He looked insane. You know, I was there. Initially, he didn't uh, leave uh, so much impact, but as he kept posing, right, uh, you know, he was tightening up into the yeah. most greatest condition of all time, 98 yeah. uh, prejudging finals. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, having a courage to give him a whole gallon of water on a Friday night, it was like, uh, ooh. You know, that's uh, that's something to scratch your head. Right, but, it worked. but that's but that's because we just what I just mentioned. Ronnie Coleman, he's a he's a freak from another planet. You know, there's you really can't screw that guy up too badly. You know what I mean? He's he's just a, yeah. he's genetically gifted in every way possible, and his body probably just flushed it all out. You know, he probably peed yeah. six hundred times that night. You know, <laughs> yeah. I he did it in 02. Last... Remember 02? He said he or 01. He 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 also he woke up in the morning. He was cramping. He thought he wasn't going to make it to the prejudging. The one where Jay Cutler beat him at the prejudging. Yeah. And and he drank also like two gallons that morning. He said he drank. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, some people are going to guess. Can you imagine with... what you would have uh, looked like you, if you drank you two gallons the morning of a prejudging? By the time okay. you got on stage, you would have been like the Michelin man. You know, water, 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 yeah. buffalo for sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> But speaking of uh, freaks, uh, I'm sure you saw uh, Michael Crizzo and uh, yes. uh, Andrew Jack. What do you think of those I guys? A, I think that both guys are phenomenal. You know that uh, uh, Andrew Jack just now, you know, he really blew my mind that, uh, how good he actually looks. Yeah. Uh, if he improves the uh, uh, lat width, it's going to be like super hard to beat. I mean, he is that Ronnie Coleman flex thriller kind of really? freakish. Right. Yeah, the, 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 I don't even. I think he's only 29 years old, and uh, uh, as Flex told me, he's new into all these things, uh, you know, yeah, he, supplementation and yes. all that stuff. So I can only imagine what's going to happen. A lot of people don't believe that Tony Coleman was drug free until '95. You know, they just don't want to. Uh, they don't want to accept admit it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was. Yeah. He turned pro. I mean, think about it. He turned pro in like one year. I mean natural it's yeah. insane yeah and uh, this is another thing from 91 to 90, he qualified for olympia drug free a couple of times <laughs> that's crazy the, the, Milos, yeah. you know look you know you're from europe ronnie you know what was he fifth place at the nationals in 91 and he was the only one drug free so they sent him to the world amateur championships which is a notorious yeah they drug test there but everyone's on drugs at that show uh, you know everyone knows that and ronnie won beat everyone there I bet yeah. you those guys don't even – they couldn't even believe that he was probably natural. They probably yeah, never they in a million years thought that, you know. It, it's an insult to them to be – I mean, I yeah. said many times when I post the pictures <laughs> and I, I say, okay, this is uh, – uh, Ronnie beat me and he was drug-free. And then people, you know, they're, they're, they're telling me, don't be ridiculous. I'm telling you guys that he beat me. I'm juiced and he's drug-free and he beat me. You know, so that's the truth. You know, they don't want to believe it. And then yeah. they <laughs> – well, yeah, you know, me, say, why Kai Green, like? why Kai Green was natural for many guy? years. Also, people don't re don't believe, you know. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah. Listen, I gotta go. To All right, train, Milos. Uh, thank Megan you. Hopefully, we're on good terms again. Sorry about the misunderstanding, but you know, I should have called you. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't like to hear this from me. You should better fight something before I said it, right? And I, look, I was you know what? I, I make mistakes. I, I'm not one of these people that has an ego that I, that I don't can't admit when I make a mistake. But you know what? At the same point, I I love Iris. I love Hide. I love you. I I I, I really hope you guys can get together and and, and you know work this no, out because I, it's it's you I, know I, what you're I, in the same area. You you're good for the sport. I wish everyone could just work together and get along. That that's what I hope. Yeah, it's uh, impossible. I mean, I don't want to see Iris ever again. I mean, really. Well, maybe he, maybe he you guys could sit down and, and humble friend. each other. You know, but uh, you know, I tell you that thing. That I don't know if you listened to the whole uh, uh, podcast with Dennis James. I didn't know. When Dan when Dennis was coming from um, Thailand yeah. to stay with me for a month and all this stuff, yeah. right? My wife, Milma, right? Yeah. Did not want to let him get into the gym. Okay, he's not going to train here. I said, like, no, he's going to train and, you know, he's going to be home. I mean, the right thing is right thing. You know, you put uh, put them in their place. Right. Uh, as uh, he there told Iris initially, I'm not going to ask you for anybody, but Milos is like a brother to me. Right. You know, because of him, I was at the Miss Olympia and the United States. And you know, I want you to respect my wishes. Right. Get him to train here for free. And Iris called me and said all that. Right. It's okay. I'm going to train there. Thank you very much. Right. 
Oh, you're gonna be master trainer. Okay, so now I'm master trainer, <laughs> doing my master training style. Right, which, and everyone, knows, which everyone knows. Yeah. And they don't do anything about it. You know, so it just that's why I was asking. You know, try think about it. It makes sense to it. Yeah, it's a different reason. Like I said, I I hope you guys could all somehow get along. All right, Mills, I know you got to go. Thanks for joining yeah. us, of course, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this installment of Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo with Milo Sharshev. We'll see you next time. All right. I'm, I'm going. Uh, 